In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductory offer. See the link in the description to sign up. In the small print, the file number 001-35627, lodged at the US Securities and Exchange Commission, is a clause that, on the face of it, in these straitened times, threatened to have some bearing on Manchester United's approach to signing players. The document explains the fundamentals of United's finances, and for those who know where to look, spells out the extra insurance that lenders have over the club's debt repayment. United owe £175 million on a loan from BOFA Securities, formerly known as Bank of America Merrill Lynch, and have £330.8 million outstanding on senior secured notes, effectively bonds to investors. That half a billion pound deficit is a legacy to the Glazer family's leveraged buyout. To obtain that money at modest interest rates, United agreed a specific caveat with lenders. According to this covenant, the club's profit, or EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortisation, must not dip below £65 million in a rolling 12-month period. That means every three months, when United announce their accounts to investors, the total for the previous year needs to be at least £65 million, or the banks have a legal right to act. Kieran Maguire, a lecturer on football finance at the University of Liverpool and author of The Price of Football blog, says such terms are normal for commercial loans. If you look at the way the market normally lends, there will always be caveats, he says, but it is rare for English football clubs. Most in the Premier League are privately funded and many find it hard to get traditional loans because half are at risk of relegation. Manchester United are different. They are as copper-bottomed an investment prospect as you could expect. But the covenants are there as protection. Just in case Man United go a bit mad in terms of spending money, these act as penalties for poor use of cash as far as the lenders are concerned. The question now is whether the covenant has any meaningful impact on how United act. It's important to note here that the 65 million EBITDA does not include transfers, given that it's before amortization, which is how player acquisitions are recorded in the books, but wages do come into the equation. Though Jadon Sancho's prospective transfer from Borussia Dortmund did stall over salary for a number of weeks, a resolution has since been found, so it would be incorrect to say that the clause weighed on the minds of Chief Executive Ed Woodward and Chief Negotiator Matt Judge. United's wages are the highest in the Premier League at £332 million annually, but their wage to turnover ratio of 54% is the third lowest in the division, and with Alexis Sanchez now off the accounts, there is flexibility. That comfortable balance between revenue and salary is the model for how the Glazers themselves want United to run, rather than as a special observation to the banks, but nobody at the club denies the £65 million figure is a consideration amid this pandemic. Now, typically, there is a remote chance that United could break the clause. In the past decade, the lowest bid that the club posted was £92 million in 2012. Last season, it stood at £186 million. But at the start of lockdown, sources said the club estimated a hit of £115 million. Matchday revenue alone is down £4 million for each game held behind closed doors, and that's before the broadcast rebate comes into the equation. On the flip side, United's Champions League qualification ought to generate a boost of £100 million. The unknown, of course, is how long fans will be kept out of grounds, and in those circumstances, a glance in the rearview mirror is inevitable. But there is a get-out to any breach. A pass will be granted in a season when United do not reach the Champions League group stage, but it can only happen twice in non-consecutive years, before the loan is due for repayment in 2029 or the bonds mature in 2027. But what would be the doomsday scenario if United did fall foul? Well, the banks would be entitled to call in their money and bankruptcy could follow. But the reality is different though. At interest rates of between 2 and 4%, United make the banks money and so calling in the loans wouldn't really make any sense. The club also have good relations with their lenders and a resolution would be expected. When United broke the covenant of their payment in kind loans in 2010, the response was a rise in the interest rate from 14.25% to 16.25%. And United also have the same £65 million covenant on the £150 million revolving credit facility taken out with BOFA Securities at the start of the pandemic. They've drawn down £140 million for use on cash flow, 
rather than transfers, but there are some close to the club who note Premier League rivals are working differently. Tottenham and Liverpool both attempted to use public money to furlough staff and are now making multi-million pound signings regardless. Spurs have gone further, utilising the government's COVID-19 business rescue scheme for a £175 million loan. Though that money is not going directly on recruitment, the breathing room it provides to enhance Jose Mourinho's squad is undeniable. An abuse of taxpayer funds that may be, but there are other fans who will look at United's caution in context of the £65 million covenant and decide it goes too far the other way. Our financial structure has supported strong and consistent investment in the team over many years and we remain committed to this approach, said a United spokesperson. We are continuing to explore options for strengthening the team, but we would be irresponsible to ignore the huge economic impact and ongoing uncertainties created by the pandemic. United would point to a net transfer spend of 175 million euros since last summer, the highest of any European club, as evidence that the clause has no material impact on their recruitment. Only time will tell whether that changes as the pandemic continues to have an impact. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductory offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team, plus David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.